What is going on friends? It is Ben with Bearded Spruce back for another video. Today we're making something pretty awesome. I'm sitting at it, this outdoor dining table. It is made with teak wood for the top. It is solid, kind of butcher block style as you can see. And then the border and the legs are all redwood that I stained with some black outdoor staining. This entire project costs about $500 total, all said and done with the hardware, everything. I have detailed instructions on how to build this, including how to build kind of a rabbit joint for the tabletop to sit on. Use a bunch of pocket screws to put it all together because each one of these top pieces that we'll see in a little bit are only 16 inches wide by the uh, three feet long and so I go over how to connect them all as one big solid piece, how to connect all the pieces, how to cut the corner joints to make everything just nice and tight and wonderful. You know what's crazy is we don't actually always set out to have me build something. I'm in my backyard, a work in progress deck and to be honest we looked for months for an outdoor table that we liked that was reasonable price under two thousand dollars and to find something for that price that has good reviews is really difficult uh things fall apart in the sun and the weather all that kind of stuff i totally get it but at the same time i really wanted to just buy a table and move on to the next part of the deck project which is going to be a covered um awning but it's really hard to find. So I ended up designing and building this one inspired by some kind of crate and barrel, pottery barn, uh, outdoor furniture that I saw online. And like I mentioned, it's only $500 completely finished. And as long as I treat it with some teak oil, which you'll see later in this video, how to do that. Once a season, maybe twice a season at most, it's gonna last way longer than anything that you buy at the store. So. First of all, thanks for joining. I'm super excited that you're here. I have a lot of tutorial videos like this, building furniture, other stuff, building this deck, all kinds of stuff on my channel, as well as other DIY projects around the house. So definitely check those out. I also review the tools that I use uh, because after I use them for about a year, I get a feel for them and then I come on and tell you what I like about them, what I don't like about them and give my honest opinion because I buy everything with my own money. So check out some other videos. Um, I also put all the affiliate links if you want to support my channel. It's an easy way to support me. You just click on a link in the description below that goes to Amazon and it will showcase, you know, what tools I use and what products I use and all that kind of stuff. And if you buy through there, it gives me just a little bit of, you know, a bump back from Amazon. I also have the cut list as well as all of the stuff that I bought at Lowe's, all these materials uh, listed below as well. So you can follow along in the video and go buy the materials uh, before or whatever you choose to do. So without further ado, let's jump into it. We're going to jump back into my shop. I went and got some teak wood, um, these each plank where each panel is one inch by 16 inches by three feet. So you got 16 inches wide, 36 inches tall, um, and then an inch thick. It's probably more like three quarters of an inch, but honestly it actually looks like an inch. So we'll find out. But I use this same material from Lowe's for a few coffee tables. I'll link that video right up here. Um, and they've held up really well over the last year. The teak oil is key to keeping it fresh and clean as you kind of get wear and tear on it. But honestly, they look like pretty much the same as when I bought them and built them. So check that video out up there. But today I'm gonna use the same teak wood for the top of our outdoor table. It weathers really well, it's an exotic wood and is meant for anything, you know, in a wet application, all the way through to outdoor furniture, indoor shelving, all kinds of stuff. So definitely check it out. 
I buy it at Lowe's. Um, you can buy it other places, but that's where I source these pieces. The total size, I'll kind of show you the drawing, the plans here. So the total size of the table is going to be six and a half feet long by about 37 and a half inches wide, so just over three feet. And I'll explain how I got to that as I go through this process. Um, but basically we're going to laminate these pieces for the first step and get them all connected together as one big piece. And then we'll come back and build a frame and then attach the legs and get it painted and sealed and ready to just enjoy our outdoor deck. All right, so now that we got all of the pieces unwrapped, I'm over here at my pocket hole jig station. And I measured this and it's pretty much right at a full inch thickness, which is kind of awesome to know. Um, usually dimensional lumber and a lot of lumber that I get um, when it says an inch thick, it's actually three quarters of an inch because of, you could Google it and dig into it. It's a whole thing. Um, but the important thing to know is on this pocket hole jig, if you want a good pocket hole jig, uh, I'll link to this one in the description below. If you're doing projects like this, cabinets, I mean, I use this, I have this pretty much permanently set up over here because I'm always doing some kind of project that involves some pocket holes. I'm going to drill four holes um, across each side. So now that I have all the pocket holes drilled, you can see I put four on each side on all five pieces and I kind of did a little dry fit test to see how even it's going to be and it's going to be pretty awesome. And then you can see I put one on each end, so one on this end and then one on that end. And I even put, you know, pocket hole pocket holes on each of the very far ends because that's how I'm going to secure it to the actual frame itself. Here you can see I am starting the glue up. I spread a nice thick layer of glue and then come back and cover the entire edge of this with glue using my finger. You can also use a brush or whatever you choose to do. Then once you have good coverage across the entire edge, you lay down the board, make sure it's completely lined up. And once it's in place, you grab some of the one and a half inch pocket screws and use your drill and drill bit to attach them, making sure that nothing moves in the meantime and everything stays exactly where you want. You could also use a clamp here to put pressure on the two pieces, both from the outside and top to bottom, if you wanted to ensure everything stays in place. But you can see here, I'm actually just using my foot to kind of press down on the boards and making sure nothing moves when I'm doing this process. Then once you have one side all screwed in, you go ahead and put the other four screws in, in the other direction to really get everything nice and snug. And it, you can't see this in the video, but as I'm doing this, it's really sucking that joint together and making sure that there is no gap in between the two pieces of wood. So here's the top. Um, everything is all screwed together and I'm laying it on a flat surface um, to dry for 24 hours before I do anything to it. So the same process that I used for that first piece, I used throughout the whole process. And then we'll move on to making the frame. So now that I have the top made and it's drying, I'll let it dry for about 24 hours. I'm gonna work on the frame. And I'm building the frame out of 
this redwood that I got also from Lowe's. Um, you could use really any wood that you want for this because I'm going to paint it, but I like using redwood or cedar uh, just because it's meant for outdoor use and it's going to last a lot longer than say a pine uh, frame. You could totally use pine and go on the cheaper side, but I'm choosing to do this. And so let me show you the plan. Okay, so I'm going to make this entire frame the top piece and you can see that there are going to be 45 degree beveled angles in the corners and then um, there's going to be four pieces the longest pieces are going to be 81 and a half inches and then the width is going to be 37 and a half and then i'm going to cut this groove out and you can see i i thought it was going to be three quarters of an inch thick the top piece, but it's actually a full inch thick. So I'm gonna cut essentially these two by fours behind me uh, with this slot taken out. So basically the entire top are, is going to just sit nicely into the frame that I'm going to piece all together. To make sure that everything is going to be exactly the size I want, I'm using these blocks here. Um, a link to this whole kit. Shout out to my mom, she bought me this kit as a gift and I use it all the time just to make sure everything is completely exactly the size I want. So essentially I'm going to um, make sure that the top of the blade is right at an inch and then I'm going to move my guard over to three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to cut, make, basically make two cuts, one on the top and one on the side, and you'll kind of see as I go. So I'm going to run all three of these through here, and then we'll come back and make the second cut. So here's a quick, easy trick to fill some gaps. So I grabbed some of my wood glue and you can see there's like a little gap there and I just poured some on. I'll do a little extra so you can see the process. I just poured a little on the entire seam and this is where the two boards met and just kind of rub it with your finger. Let it dry for not very long, like here's here's another gap here I'll do. Like that. It's it's okay that it's a mess. Here's um, here's another one that I did over here. And then take your palm sander and you're just going to run across it. Um, this is 80 grit. Um, you could also use 120, really anything that's gonna break up some particles and basically do what I did here. And you can't even see the seam. So let me, let me demonstrate. So you see the seam here. completely gone because basically what it does is takes the wood glue mix it with mixes it with the sawdust and fills the gap um, with something that is very similar to the obviously the color of the wood because it's using the sawdust from the wood to fill that gap so I'm going to go ahead and do that whole process and then we'll move on 
So for the end pieces, I take them over to my miter saw and I cut 45 degree angles angling towards each other on each side. And then once I have both sides cut, I take them over to the table and try to dry fit them and see if they fit correctly. You can see I used a clamp on one side to hold it in place while I try to secure the other one on the other side. Once I have these cut to the right size, I then come back and measure each end piece and then go cut those on my miter saw to be perfectly uh, the size that I need to cap those ends. After you have the end caps cut to the exact size you need, I'm coming back and cutting all of the legs. These will be 29 inches because the top is an inch thick and I want the total height to be 30 inches exactly. And so I go and grab the pieces of four by four and basically the measurement, while it is uh, very important, the most important thing with these four legs so there's no wobble in the table is to make sure that they're all the same height. So make sure when you cut the first one that all of them use that exact size for the rest of them. Once I have everything cut the exact size I want, including the legs and the frame pieces, I sand them down with 120 grit up to 240 grit sandpaper and then I take them to a spot uh, in my driveway where I sand them and paint them with a black stain that will protect them and just make them look really good for years to come. All right, so now that I have it nice and sanded, um, the paint is drying on the other parts, I am going to take this teak oil and apply it with just a clean rag. All right, so you pour a little on and then you just rub it on. And this stuff does have a pretty strong odor, so you wanna make sure that you do it in a nice ventilated area. Um, but this just brings the wood to life. It's so pretty. And even though the sides are gonna be covered up in the structure, um, you're gonna to wanna to just coat the whole thing um, multiple times. So just put on some music and uh, enjoy. All right, so now that um, the top is finished, I also went ahead and painted all of the sides and the legs uh, with this black stain. And I've used this for a few outdoor projects and it works really well. Um, so check this out, you can get it on Amazon. I'll link to the affiliate link down in the description below. You can also get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, really any black stain uh, that you choose. And then um, the next step that I'm about to start doing is kind of assemble the side rails all the way around um, to be attached to the tabletop. And I'll kind of show that as I'm doing it. Um, basically you need quite a few clamps um, and then we're going to use the pocket screws underneath to attach to these pieces. And then I'm going to also use some glue and um, nails to hold everything in place while I attach everything.
All right, so now I have everything attached, um, glue all through in the seam. Um, and then as you can see, I have it all clamped up so it stays nice and straight and connected while the glue dries. And then I did all the pocket screws you can see right here. I attached all of those all the way around, including the ends, as well as you can't really see them, but you can almost see it, a little nail hole. I did some 18 gauge nails as well with my nail gun to kind of keep everything in place while it dries. The glue is gonna do most of the work for you, but those pocket screws and the nails and the clamps and everything are gonna keep everything nice and tight while the glue solidifies. Um, all right, so now that it has dried for a few hours, I took all the clamps off, and now I'm going to attach a stringer down the middle. Um, to do that, I need to take the measurement. So essentially it is 78 and a half. So then I got this stringer cut uh, for the middle. Um, basically I'm going to measure both sides and make sure it's right in the middle. And essentially this is gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna glue it to the, the, the top. So this will help with any sagging that might happen in the middle. And it also will keep the outside pieces nice and snug together. So. I'm going to run some glue down the middle here. Like so. screw some screws straight down into it and for this I'm using two and a half inch decking screws uh, they're exterior rated um, and you don't want any bigger than that because really you just want to suck the wood together so the glue can uh, have some time to work in there So now once that glue dries, it will be nice and snug. And uh, another thing to note is a full inch off of this board, so it wouldn't stick out over top of this. Um, so that is super helpful to make it all just nice and flush. Okay, so for the last piece of this, I'm going to use these three and seven eighths inch lag screws. Um, it's for decking and you know, rated for outdoors. And basically I'm gonna put one here, one here on all of them. So two of these. Um, and then the other piece of this is once again, using some wood glue. So I'm going to just slather wood glue all over here. So you clamp the leg to the spot after you put the glue in there, and then you use a kind of small bit to drill a pilot hole. And the pilot hole with the drill bit helps it so there's a less, less chance of it splitting on you. Then you screw it in. Here's the final product. You can see we got some fun chairs and I painted an old bench that we made a few years ago to match the black. And it is all set up and the perfect size for six to eight people.
Thank you so much for watching and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Check out some other videos like I mentioned before. Uh, this was a super fun project. I hope if you do it, you enjoy. Feel free to leave comments and questions or concerns about the design or whatever you have in the comments below. And we will see you next time.